Well, with me now is Rachel Keane, who inherited a rare form of mitochondrial disease from her mother, and Dr David King, who runs a campaign called Human Genetics Alert. Rachel Keane, can you just explain what is your disease and why are you so keen to stop it being passed on? Of course. And first of all, thank you very much for having me here. Um, the disease that I have a family history of is called Milas. What it is is a form of mitochondrial disease. Now, these are a group of varied, unpredictable and truly devastating diseases. And, I mean, I think this news is to be welcomed wholeheartedly because we're talking about preventing disease in my children, in my future children, but also for many women like me who are in this situation. So you would have no qualms about a third genetic parent? Well, first of all, I do take some hesitancy over your use of the word parent. That does define on how... Well, a source of DNA uh, yeah, is person. arguably a parent. Well, That's it is, but if we're word, saying yeah. mitochondria is equal to parency, well, you don't get mitochondria from your father, so therefore fathers aren't parents. So all I'm saying is this is a bit of caution. But personally, well, no, because we are talking here about no genes which have impact on who you are. What makes you you? Nuclear DNA is not affected. I am not saying I want a child with pretty blue eyes. What I am saying is we have an opportunity to prevent mitochondrial disease, truly cruel diseases, by replacing 37 genes, which are the energy cells, the battery pack. David King, what's the problem? Well, my main concern is uh, it's true enough that I wouldn't, you know, I'm very happy to believe that Rachel doesn't want, uh, you know, a, a designer baby with blue eyes and blonde hair and so, so on. But the trouble is, once you cross this line in the sand, which is a line that has been set down by governments and ethicists around the world for the last 30 years, very firm line that we shouldn't genetically alter human beings. Once you cross that line, it's really hard, logically speaking, to, to argue why you shouldn't take the next step and then the next step after but that. But who do you think would be taking these next steps? The NHS? Uh, well, for example, uh, let's take these mitochondrial diseases. There are a lot of mitochondrial diseases that are caused by mutations in the nuclear DNA. So when we get to, when, once we allow this, all the families with uh, mitochondrial uh, mutations in the mitochondrial uh, nuclear genome will, uh, will be turning around and saying, well, you've allowed them to do this. We also have mitochondrial diseases in our family. Rachel, why King? shouldn't we be allowed to do it? Um, while I understand this is a sensitive and emotive issue and there are other opinions and obviously that's perfectly valid, but I find a lot of this rhetoric incredibly sensationalist. This talk of a slippery slope is... It's unfounded, and it has been used with so much medical progress. It was used with IVF. It was used with egg donation. The assumption that we are going to slowly fall sleepwalking into something like this is ridiculous. We have regulation. We have checks and balances. It's not clear where your slippery slope is going, is it? Because there, there well, are, there are it, religious it, objections to this, which is one thing, but yours isn't that. Indeed. Yours is some sort of warning of some... Well, it, it's not a theoretical, you know, hypothetical scenario that I've made up. If you go to the United States now and you want to get uh, an egg for egg donation, uh, if, you, if, you, if you go to Harvard University and get a, a donor who, who, uh, who's at Harvard University and is tall and athletic and beautiful, you pay $50,000 for the egg. If you, if you go to an ordinary woman, you pay $5,000. That's an example of a, a eugenic marketplace but, but the hard edge of this in place. Is right you turning now. around to Rachel and saying, you can't be a mother? No, on the contrary. The, the, the other thing that your package didn't mention uh, and that uh, it has been totally omitted from the, the, the mainstream of this debate is that there is already a perfectly safe and reliable technique for... Uh, you mean uh, donor for, eggs? Uh, indeed, do, in, do, donor eggs. And the only thing that these... Uh, just let me finish. The only thing that these techniques add is that it allows the mother to be genetically related. Now, of course, everybody understands wanting to be genetically related, but that's actually not a medical benefit for anybody. Rachel Keane? To be perfectly honest, I find that quite offensive and quite presumptuous. The benefits are certainly medical. We are talking about disease prevention. The examples of Harvard may be very valid, but we are talking about a separate issue. And again, this falling into eugenics, that is not what this conversation is. And we are not the United States. We are talking about the United Kingdom government considering drafting this regulation. That's a very, very different issue. Can, can you explain to David Keane why, why donor egg is not a satisfactory solution to your problem? I don't think I will be able to explain it because I do think that some of it comes from personal belief. I am not saying I object to donor eggs. I would certainly consider adoption. I would consider donor eggs. But the point here is firstly about reproductive choice. If you do not believe that a woman has um, you know, a choice over this, then why would you support IVF? Um, and the second, choice, it, second point is it's bigger than reproductive choice. Again, this is about preventing cruel horrible diseases. That's the bottom line, isn't it? And, well, and your objection could mean 
that children are born with rare, terrible diseases. No, on the contrary, as I've, uh, I'm perfectly happy to avoid uh, these, these families having uh, passing on these diseases. And I, as I've said, there's a perfectly good technique uh, for doing that right now. So. Um, what we have to do here is, is basic medical ethics. You have to weigh the benefits against the risks. The benefits from this technique over and above what we already have is the genetic relatedness. On the other hand, the techniques themselves impose really significant risks upon the child because they're very invasive manipulation of embryos, which we know do harm to embryos and to, uh, to the animals that are, are born from those embryos. So you're, you're putting those risks on your child and you're, the risks to society of that slippery slope for the sake of a very few number of women wanting to be genetically related to their child. It doesn't add up to me. I'm sure we'll be back here over the next few months. Thank you both very much indeed for coming. Thank you so much.